and a good a day to my students. So this is the first video lecture of the big topic management of working capital, which we will cover from week four until week six of our uh, semester weeks. Okay, so the the topic management of working capital will consist of three video lectures, uh, which will which is up. Uh, uploaded in the Google Classroom as well as in the YouTube channel. Uh, and we start off with the management of working capital first, uh, then followed by the management of current assets, and lastly, the management of current liabilities. So these uh, are the topic covered for this session. We're going to look first at the introduction of to working capital. And then we're going to discuss factors affecting working capital. And then we're going to look into classifications of assets and sources of financing. And then we're going to uh, discuss about the working capital financing policies. And lastly, we're going to talk about the cash conversion cycle. So working capital is referred to as net current assets. And it is usually defined as current assets minus current liabilities. For a firm to be liquid or solvent, it is imperative that the current assets are positive. Therefore, in managing working capital, a firm needs to consider the risk return trade off that relates to the firm's liquidity and profitability. So, we're going to look uh, after this. Uh, what are the risk return trade off? Uh, that relates to the firm's liquidity and profitability. All right, so continue on from the introduction uh, previous slide. So we're going to discuss about the risk and return trade off. So to have a high working capital, we need to increase current assets because the formula is working capital equals to current asset minus current liability. Therefore, in, in order for us to have a high working capital, we need to have high assets and, of course, low liability. Right? So, how can we increase our current assets? We can buy inventory, we can increase our cash, etc. But by doing this, we are increasing our liquidity. However, our profitability might decline or unchange. So, why does profitability uh, might be declined it is because of increasing the inventory might lead to um, uh, decrease in profitability if it doesn't end with sales uh, or maybe because uh, maybe when we increase our cash we are losing out the opportunity to invest in a more profitable investment because you want to have a high cash to maintain our liquidity. Uh, for liability and equity, we can finance our operation into two ways. Uh, if we can finance our assets, uh, our investment in operation and asset by using long-term financing, uh, if we use this method, we will have low insolvency risk because we don't need to pay it anytime soon, but we will have low profitability because long-term financing is more expensive. Therefore, if we focus too much on long-term financing, our profitability will be decreased due to high cost uh, of financing, but our liquidity will be increased because long-term financing have uh, uh, have cheaper sorry because uh, long term financing uh, we have ample of time to pay it back as opposed to long term financing it's short term financing where we will have a high insolvency risk because we need to pay the liability soon but we, we, we will have high profitability due to short term financing have lower cost of financing so these are the trade-offs that you're going to see later on when we look into the working capital uh, financing policy. So what are the factors that affect working capital? 
So we have four types here, four factors here. One is the types of business, the volume of sales, seasonalities, and length of operating and cash cycle. For type of business, manufacturing and retail firms have higher working capital as compared to service organizations. The second uh, factor is volume of sales, where a higher level of sales will require a higher level of working capital. The third factor is seasonality, where during the peak season, such as festive seasons, uh, the firm may require to uh, have higher level of working capital, such as higher inventory, and of course, which will lead to higher accounts receivable. And the fourth factor is length and of length of operating and cash cycle where a firm with longer working and uh, longer operating and cash cycle will have a higher level of working capital so later on we're going to see what does it mean by operating and cash cycle before we can talk about the working capital policy we must first understand understand the classification of assets and sources of financing according to corporate finance. So in financial reporting, you have learned that assets consist of two types, which are the fixed asset and the current assets, whereas a liability consists of two types as well, which are long-term liabilities and current liabilities. And we also have equity which represents the ownership portions of the assets. Okay. However, when we talk about corporate finance, uh, they have said that assets should be categorized instead into two types, which are the permanent assets and temporary assets. So the permanent asset means assets which are expected to be held for more than one year, Whereas a temporary asset is referring to the asset that can that will be liquidated within the current year. So on the surface, it seems like the definition of permanent and temporary assets are quite similar to those of fixed assets and current assets. Okay, however, uh, it argues that under the current asset, we have current assets item that do not fluctuate uh, during the year, meaning that it remain constant from the beginning of the year until the end of the year. For example, let's say uh, an inventory, uh, you can, throughout the years, the, the value of inventory will fluctuate according to the seasonality of the sales. Right? So during the peak season, the inventory will go up and then when during the off-peak season, the inventory will go down. And so it goes uh, through every season until the end of the year. Okay, But you will notice that uh, in the current asset, in the inventory level, it will never touch the zero. Okay, the inventory will never touch the zero, meaning that it will have the minimum amount of inventory and the minimum amount of inventory will remain constant throughout the years. So we, main, we maintain that the minimum level of inventory is what we call as safety stock or buffer stock, meaning that stock that we kept for emergency purposes. So it will never touch us zero. Therefore, the, the fixed portions of the inventory, the minimum portion of the inventory is what we categorize as permanent current asset permanent current asset. Therefore, permanent asset consists of all fixed assets and the portions of current asset that never fluctuate, fluctuates throughout the year. So it doesn't only apply to inventory, it also applies to cash. Uh, so if you look at the fluctuations of your cash balances, uh, throughout the year, it will never touch us zero. So it will never touch zero. So the minimum amount of cash is what we call as minimum cash requirement and it will be part of the permanent current asset. Therefore, whatever is left, the amount that fluctuates over the year, that is what we call as temporary asset.
okay uh, for the permanent sources uh, it also me uh, it also defined as a maturity uh, for more than one years which is on the surface looks like the definitions of long-term liability okay but we also include equity as part of the financing that have maturity more than one year therefore we add up the long-term liabilities with equity and we should get permanent sourcing okay for the current liabilities uh, it usually refers to temporary resourcing where short-term financing that comprises mainly of current liability but they also have recognized a special form of sourcing which is the spontaneous sourcing this is the type of uh, liabilities that arises uh, during the day-to-day -day operations meaning that uh, you have to incur them uh, periodically or regularly uh, because it's part of your operation business operation for example uh, cre uh, trade creditors uh, and also other pay uh, other account payable or maybe accruals and repayments okay so we call that as a spontaneous sourcing Alright, so now we are going to discuss the working capital policy. So if you look at the diagram stated to you here, we have three types of working capital policy. We have the hedging policy, the conservative policy and the aggressive policy. So we are going to discuss one policy by one. Alright, so this is the diagram for the uh, assets. Okay, as we have discussed previously, there are two types of assets, which are the permanent assets and temporary assets. Okay, so permanent asset consists of non-current assets and permanent current assets. So if you look at the diagram, these are the current asset. All these are current assets, but we have we we can see that there is a minimum level of uh, assets that never touches the zero uh, therefore the uh, the, per, the permanent part of the current asset we need to separate it out add with the non-current assets or fixed asset to get the permanent asset therefore whatever left from the current asset after deducting the permanent current asset we call it as a temporary assets all right so if you look at the hedging policy this policy are uh, uh, aiming for a moderate level of risk and return. They do not want to have too much of a uh, risk and they don't want to have too low of a return. So they want to achieve the moderate level of risk and return. So if the company wants to adopt the hedging policy, they need to match assets with the maturity. They need to match the useful life of the assets with the maturity life of the sources for example if they want to purchase a five-year vehicle then they should go and borrow five years uh, loan five-year loan they need to match the maturity of the loan with the useful life of the assets so you're going to find that overall the total the, the temporary asset would equals to the amount of temporary and permanent uh, temporary and uh, spontaneous sources whereas permanent asset will equal to the value of permanent sources okay for conservative policy uh, the company aims to have a low risk in their financing policy so when they want to have low risk then it means they will have to focus more on permanent sources meaning that if they want to purchase three month invest inventory inventory that going to be sold within three months if they want to go for the conservative policy they perhaps they will borrow for two years uh, of loan two years of loan so they are using permanent source to purchase temporary asset 
They are using permanent source. See this permanent source? They are using it to purchase some of the temporary asset. Okay, they use them. They use the permanent source to purchase all of the te permanent asset and some of the temporary uh, temporary asset. And the remainder of the temporary and spontaneous sources will be financed. Will be used to finance temporary asset. Therefore, you're going to see that permanent source will be much bigger than the value of permanent asset. And temporary assets value will be much bigger than the temporary source. Therefore, they will achieve low risk because of the high liquidity coming from the permanent source. Why is it high liquidity? Because remember the example I gave you, they borrow for two years to purchase three months of three months of inventory. Okay, so it means that even though they have sold off the inventory and received the cash in returns, they still do not need to pay for the loan just yet. They still don't need to pay for the loan just yet. So they can keep on rolling the money they receive from the inventory to another season of sales until they have accumulated enough money. And when they pay off the loan, they have more than enough money to pay off the loan. So if you are you for concentrating more on the permanent source, you're going to have high liquidity which lead to low risk. However, you need to understand that permanent source has higher cost of borrowing compared to the temporary source. Therefore, uh, this policy will cause you to have lower return due to a uh, high cost of borrowing. Right, for aggressive policy, the company aims to have high return, meaning that they want to have an, a, a source of financing that is low cost, which means that they need to focus on the temporary source, on the temporary source. So you're going to see here in the diagram for the aggressive policy, the temporary source is used to purchase all of the temporary asset and some of the permanent current asset meaning that maybe they are borrow nine, borrowing nine months uh, of loan to purchase five years of vehicle okay the the interest would be low yes but you might have problem in terms of liquidity because once the nine month loan is expired the the vehicle that you purchase has not yet yield return for them to pay the loan Therefore, the company may have to take return from any other assets that the company have. That's why you will have uh, your liquidity will suffer. However, you will have high return due to low cost of borrowing. So when you want to do some parsing later on, this shall be your guideline. This shall be your guideline to identify which policy the company is adopting. Alright, to further our understanding, let's look at some of the tutorial questions. So this question is taken from a final exam question, which is from December 2019, question 2A. So in this question, they give you the extract of financial position and the extract of the profit or loss statement. And they also give you the additional information in which 25% of inventory and cash are considered to be buffer. So the word buffer here means permanent current asset. Permanent current asset. Meaning that the other, the remaining 75% of the inventory and cash are considered to be a temporary asset. For number two and number three information, this is for question 2B. Uh, in which we're going to uh, cover after this, where we go to the cash uh, conversion cycle. Alright, so we leave, we leave off first the number two and number three additional information. So the question asks you to determine the working capital policy adopted by the firm, and then they ask you to discuss the risk and return trade-off of the policy. So before you can determine the working capital policy, you need to calculate first temporary asset, temporary resource, permanent asset and permanent source so that you can compare like this uh, for us to understand whether the company is adopting hedging, conservative or aggressive policy. 
So permanent asset as we agreed previously is a fixed asset plus with the permanent current asset. So you can take the whole figure 1.8 million here for the financial position. And for the permanent current asset, you only take 25% of the inventory and cash to be your permanent current asset. Therefore, you get permanent asset to be at 2,031,250 ringgit. And temporary asset will be the reminder of the asset that the, that the permanent asset doesn't take, which means the um, uh, current asset minus the permanent current asset. So the current asset is 1.45 million. We minus out the amount that we've calculated previously, 231,250. And you should get your temporary asset to be at 1,218,750. Okay, for permanent source, we have agreed that it is a long term plus with the equity. So you just add the two figure up to get 2.7 million. And of course, temporary source are all of the current liabilities. All right. So if the question doesn't specify about spontaneous sources, they don't ask you to differentiate the spontaneous sources. So we're just going to assume all of the current liabilities to be at temporary source. To be a temporary source unless the question specifically mentioned that certain percentage of the current liability is spontaneous uh, then only then we recognize the spontaneous sources if the question is silent just like this so we take all of the current liability uh, as temporary source all right from the calculation that we have done previously we can now compare to determine the working capital policy so from here you can see that permanent source is used to buy all of the permanent asset and some of the temporary asset the focus now is on the temporary source therefore the firm adopts conservative policy they also ask you to discuss the risk and return trade-off therefore under conservative policy the risk is low due to high liquidity. However, the return is also low due to high cost of financing. Alright, so now we look at the second uh, tutorial question. This is taken from the common test, uh, December 2019. They give you also the information about the assets. And also, it states here, uh, three quarter of the current asset are considered to be temporary. Therefore, one quarter is permanent current asset. They also state here, long term financing is used to finance all short, all non current, and half of the permanent current asset. So this is used to calculate permanent source, and this is used to calculate temporary source. So the question asks you to determine the working capital policy adopted by the firm and also discuss the risk and return trade-off. So temporary permanent source, sorry, permanent asset, uh, non-current asset plus a quarter of the current asset, which is 2.8 million. And therefore, the temporary asset is the reminder of the current asset, which is the three quarter of current asset. Uh, 900,000. Okay, permanent source says it, find, it use permanent source to finance all of the non-current asset and half of the permanent current asset. So you add the two figure up. Okay, where do I get the 300,000? From here, the calculation of the permanent current asset previously. So permanent source is 2.65 million and of course temporary source is the other half of the permanent current asset plus with temporary and set so you get 1.05 million from here you can see the the focus is on the temporary source because it is much higher than temporary air asset the focus here is on temporary source therefore the firm adopts aggressive policy which provide the firm high risk due to low liquidity and but also high return due to low cost of financing Alright, the other tutorial, let's look at the third tutorial, which is taken from the final examination question, June 2019, question 2A. So below is the extract from the statement of financial position. They give you the maximum level of asset and the minimum level of assets. 
And then it says here, creative berhad, finances all non-current assets, and half of the permanent current asset with long-term fund, this is to calculate the permanent source, and the balance with the short-term financing. So why do they give you the maximum and the minimum amount here? If you still recall the diagram that we have used previously, the temporary asset has the fluctuation of up and down. So the, the, the peak of the fluctuation is what we call as the maximum amount of the current asset, where the value here is what we call as the minimum amount. Therefore, temporary asset is the difference between the two assets here. The difference between the maximum and the minimum is what we call as the temporary asset. Okay, so if you can see here, non-current asset remain the same during the maximum or the minimum amount because the diagram shows a constant line here. So it doesn't change. Alright, so calculate for the, the permanent asset. So permanent asset is the minimum amount. See the touch, see the where the, the, the line touches the, uh, the straight line here. So all of the minimum amount is what we call as permanent asset. So you just add everything up. 2.5 plus 100 plus 50,000 plus 80,000, you get 2.73 million. So this is your permanent asset. And your temporary asset is the difference between the two figures. So you just minus 3.685 million with 2.73 million. So you get 955,000. So this is your temporary asset. Then can you calculate your permanent source where all of the non-current asset and half of the permanent current asset. So where can I get the permanent current asset? 100,000 plus 50,000 plus 80,000. You should get 230,000. Half of it is 150,000. So your permanent source is 2.61 million and temporary source is the other half of the permanent current asset. Plus with the temporary asset here, you should get 1.07 million. Here you can see permanent source is lesser than permanent asset. But the focus now is on the temporary source which is much higher than the temporary asset. Therefore, the firm adopts aggressive policy. Alright, so that's the end of the working capital policy. Now, we will, I would like to uh, continue on to the second part of chapter 4. Sorry, chapter 4 which is the cash conversion cycle. All right. So what is cash conversion cycle? It is the length of time from the beginning of the production process until, the, until when cash is collected from the sales, less the average payment. Okay. So if you look at the diagram here, uh, day zero represents the purchase of raw material on credit and production commences. Okay. So this is the day zero timeline. So let's say it takes you 45 days to convert the raw material into sales. To convert material into sales. So the time taken to process the material and convert them into sales is what we call as inventory conversion period. We convert the inventory into sales. Let's say it takes 45 days for the company to do so. Okay, so on the 45th day, the production completes and then we sell our pot complete product, finished goods to customer, most, most probably on credit to encourage sales. Okay, and it is your credit term that says that the debtors are allowed to pay you back within 40 days. Your credit term says the, the debtors can pay you back within 40 days. So the 40 days is represent is uh, represents receivable collection period or another name for this is average collection period. We were, we've already covered that previously. Average collection period or receivable collection period. So you can see that it takes the company 85 days, 45 plus 40 days, 85 days to convert raw material into cash to convert raw material into cash. So the 85 days is what we call as operating cycle. Operating cycle. All right. So remember on the first day where you purchase raw material on credit, okay, usually creditor will not wait 85 days for you to pay them back. 
Okay, so let's say the supplier gives you the credit terms of 26 days. Only 26 days. So on the 26th day, you need to pay off the supplier and you are experiencing cash outflow. Your cash inflow only happens after 85 days. It should be 85 days, yeah. Uh, however, on the 26th day, you have already need to pay for the supplier. So 85 days minus the 26 days, you get 59 days. So the period of 59 days here is what we call as cash conversion cycle in which we are experiencing uh, insufficient funds to continue on our operation. Uh, this also represents the period of time in which we need to borrow from bank because we have already paid suppliers and we are and we are waiting for the cash inflow to come after 85 days. So cash conversion cycle is a dangerous period because the longer the cash conversion cycle is, the more you need to borrow from bank. Right? And the more you borrow from bank, the higher is the interest cost, which will reduce your profitability. Okay, That's why it says here, it represents the amount of time the firm resources are tied up. Because you can only pay back to bank after 85 days. So the longer you borrow until you receive your cash, the more interest you have to pay. Okay. So we can calculate cash conversion cycle with uh, ICP here plus with the RCP or ACP and minus the PDP. Okay. So ICP here we can calculate using the inventory divided by cost of goods sold times with 360 days. For the RCP is debtors divided by credit sales times 360 days. Whereas PDP is credited divided by cost of sales times with 360 days. So inventory conversion period is uh, is a, an inversion of inventory turnover. It means that uh, let's say you have calculated. Remember the inventory turnover we learned in the previous chapter. Uh, let's say the inventory turnover is eight times. So it means that uh, for every 45 days the company sell off their stock okay inventory to over uh, represent in terms of times in a year whereas icp represent it in terms of days in a year right so how can we reduce cash conversion cycle we need to reduce the icp we need to reduce the rcp or acp and we need to increase the pdp so the shorter the operating cycle and the longer the PDP, the shorter is your cash conversion cycle. So how to reduce ICP? Uh, anything that you can think of to uh, to hasten the sales of your product. Uh, you can refer back to the second chapter, uh, the financial ratio. Uh, we can also reduce the RCP. We can also look at the performance uh, financial ratio. And also, we can increase the PDP by paying the account payable in the slowest possible way without damaging firm's credit rating. Alright, so let's look at the tutorial. This is the, uh, the continuation from the previous tutorial that we have uh, done under the working capital policy. Now, I want to use the second and the third information here. And it also says here, assume that the annual expenditure is 900000 for one investment cycle with 8% interest for negotiable financing. So they asked to evaluate the implication of interest on cash conversion cycle based on the following independent events. Okay. There's a question there, but... Alright. So uh, calculate for the cash conversion cycle. Yeah, the formula is ICP plus RCP minus the PDP. So it gives you the inventory to over to be at six times a year. So you can convert them in terms of days by dividing 360 days a year with six times. Meaning that every 60 days, the company sell off their product. For RCP, uh, you can take the formula for the average collection period, ACP, whereby it is... Uh, 
Account receivable divided by credit sale here, 90% of the sale are on credit. Uh, times with the 2.5 million here from the sales, times with the 360 days, which you get 84 days here. And minus the PDP, PDP is account payable divided by cost of goods sold. Account payable here is 350,000 divided by cost of goods sold to be at 1.4 million times with 360 days, you should get 90 days. So ICP plus RCP minus PDP, the CCC is 54 days. Right. So they ask to discuss the implication if, if, um, uh, if RCP is shortened by 4 days and if PDP is shortened to 80 days. Okay, so we look at the first scenario. What happened if we are able to uh, shorten the RCP by 4 days? So if we reduce the ICP, meaning that the CCC would be reduced as well. So meaning that the new CCC will be 50 days. Okay, reduced by 4 days, meaning that the new CCC will be 50 days. So, if CCC has been reduced, then we can uh, save on the amount of interest paid because we are borrowing four day lesser than the previous CCC. Okay, so how can we uh, evaluate the, the implication here? You take the annual expenditure of 900,000, you find first what is the expenditure, average expenditure in, for one day. So, you divide by 360 days. So one day the company has to spend around 2.5 to 2,500. So if the, 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 the CC has been reduced by four days, meaning that the interest is also reduced by how much? So take the, the daily expenditure here times with the amount of days that you do not need to borrow anymore. Previously you have to borrow for 54 days, right? Now you only have to borrow for 50 days. So you no longer has to borrow for four days. So this is become uh, the reduced borrowing amount. So you no longer have to borrow for uh, eleven thousand. Sorry, ten thousand. You no longer need to borrow for ten thousand. Okay, and the interest you do have to pay is times with the eight percent. You no longer has to pay interest of eight hundred thousand because your CCC has been reduced by four days okay however if the ccc uh if the pdp has been in, has been shortened to 80 days previously it was 90 days right now it's only 80 days so the pdp has been reduced so it has been uh reduced by 10 days so if pdp is reduced then ccc is increased Okay, therefore, PCCC is increased by 10 days. Therefore, interest is also increased by 2,500 uh, 2, times with the 10 days, times with 8%. You also have to uh, add additional 2,000 worth of interest if your PDP has been shortened to 80 days. Okay, another question for the cash conversion cycle is taken from the common test, the same common test in the previous question. It says here the company has an invited to over of five times per year. Uh, collect receivable in 45 days. This is your RCP. Pay is applied in 50 days. This is PDP. Yearly expenditure is 2.502 million. The form asks you to calculate the question asks you to calculate cash conversion cycle. So our uh, ICP is the uh, use the invited to over to divide uh, plus with the RCP minus with the PDP. So you get a CCC of 67 days. And then it says here calculate the firm's new cash conversion cycle if the invited to over increase to six times. So previously it was five times, now it's six times, so it becomes 60 days. The new CCC is 60, uh, the new ICP is 60 days. And company is able to delay the payment to its supplier by 7 days. Previously, it was 50 days. Now, it becomes 57 days. Therefore, your new CCC is 48 days. And then it says here, compute the annual saving resulted from the change in B. So, you can see CCC has been reduced from 67 days to 48 days. 
meaning that I no longer need to borrow for 90 days. Do not need to borrow for 90 days. So calculate for daily expenditure 6950. Calculate the change in the CCC which is reduced by 90 days. Therefore, annual saving is the daily expenditure times with the reduction in CCC times with the interest rate of 5% here. So the annual saving that you're going to realize is 6,602 ringgit and 50 cent. Alright, now we go to the last tutorial here, which is from June 2019. Let's say Obaraka Berhad amounting to 1,062,500. 25 percent are cash sale. Cost of goods sold is 36 percent of sales. Inventory to the average inventory is 45,000. The receivable is collected six times a year, so you can calculate the RCP here yeah, by dividing 360 days with six times. And the account payable is paid 30 days after it rises. That will be your PDP. So you can calculate the ICP first by taking the inventory divided by cost of goods sold. So cost of sold is cost of sale is 36% of sales. So you just time this times with 360 days, you get 40, 42 days for ICP, 60 days for RCP minus the PDP 30 days. Your CCC is 72 days. So annual saving here, if the CCC is reduced to 62 days. So the change in the CCC is 10 days, annual expenditure is 1,944 uh, ringgit per day. So annual saving here times with the interest rate 6% is 1,136 ringgit 40 cent. So that's the end of chapter uh, working capital, management of working capital. So after you finish uh, looking at this slide, you can now go to the second video lecture, which is the management of current assets. Uh, so thank you for your time and your patience and your attention. I'll see you for next video.